So you think you've got problems? Homeowners in Japan may need to check their building's structural integrity. Environment Ministry officials have released data showing unprecedented subsidence since the March 11th earthquake. The officials said following the quake, nearly 6,000 square kilometers of land sank by more than 2 centimeters. That's 1,000 times the previous year's figure and the highest since records began in 1978. About half the 30 areas in 20 prefectures were recorded as sinking enough to impact on building stability. Ministry officials reported Kesenuma in Miyagi Prefecture sank the most by 73.8 centimeters. Residents of Tohoku and Kanto experienced subsidence by more than 10 centimeters in seven different areas. Officials attributed the subsidence to the March 11th earthquake. They expressed concerns the subsidence might still spread and cause further damage to buildings. The official said following the quake, nearly 6,000 square kilometers of land sank by more than 2 centimeters. That's 1,000 times the previous year's figure and the highest since records began in 1978. About half the 30 areas in 20 prefectures were recorded as sinking enough to impact on building stability. Ministry officials reported Kesenuma in Miyagi Prefecture sank the most by 73.8 centimeters. Residents of Tohoku and Kanto experienced subsidence by more than 10 centimeters in seven different areas. Officials attributed the subsidence to the March 11th earthquake. They expressed concerns the subsidence might still spread and cause further damage to buildings. Experts with Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority are looking at their surveys of the country's power plants and they don't like what they see. They've been checking the ground beneath a handful of facilities for signs of earthquake vulnerability. They say active seismic faults could run beneath part of a plant in northern Japan. NRA experts met to evaluate the results of a survey they carried out earlier this month at the Higashidori nuclear plant. They agreed two faults in the compound are most likely active. They also said they can't ac accept the operator's contention that groundwater caused a shift in the layers of the earth. The experts will hear from representatives of Tohoku Electric next week and then reach their conclusion. The operator won't have to scrap the reactors even if the NRA determines the faults are active. No key facilities sit on the faults, but the utility will have to review the plant's earthquake resistance measures, which could delay the resumption of operations. The love of money is the root of all evil. The projected earthquake movements will be quite different since the present projection does not consider the existence of active faults in the compound. The head of Japan's nuclear watchdog says it cannot begin safety screening of offline reactors until new safety standards are set up in July. All but two of Japan's 54 reactors remain offline following last year's accident at the Fukushima plant. The chairman of the Nuclear Regulation Authority, Shuichi Tanaka, says it wants to keep the debate on safety open to the public. Even if utilities apply to restart reactors, we cannot begin screening applications unless new safety rules are made into law next July. He added that the authority will stop Japan's only two operating reactors at the OE plant in Fukui Prefecture if they don't meet the new standards. But he said he cannot make any decision at this stage and that he has no intention of suspending the reactors anytime soon. People in Japan are getting used to a new but familiar political reality. The Liberal Democrats are coming back to power after trouncing the Democratic Party in a lower house election. And the man who was once Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is set to take his old job back. Our party's victory doesn't mean that voters are putting 100% trust back in the LDP. People wanted to end the three-year political confusion and stagnation brought about by the Democrats. Our mission is to tackle the critical situation Japan faces. 
We need to speed up the reconstruction from last year's disaster. On the economy, we have to beat deflation, curb the strong yen, and create jobs. On diplomacy and national security, we will rebuild the Japan-U.S. alliance, then improve relations with other countries, and protect our land and waters. Now, Abe has begun picking his cabinet and party leaders. Abe reportedly plans to appoint former Prime Minister Taro Aso as Deputy Prime Minister. Political analysts say Abe hopes a veteran politician will help stabilize his government. Aso shares many of Abe's conservative views. Abe says he'll keep Secretary General Shigeru Ishiba in his post. Sh Ishiba managed the party's election campaign. The new government is expected to take power next week. Germany decided to go non-nuclear in the wake of last year's Fukushima disaster. The country's government says the shift to renewable energy source sees is going smoothly. A quarter of all electricity now comes from such sources. The government has already taken eight nuclear reactors offline, but this has had no impact on maintaining a stable energy supply. The government's first report on the energy shift said that wind, solar and other renewable energy sources accounted for 25% of all power consumption in the first half of this year. The figure is up from last year's 20%. The report attributes to the increase to a drop in power consumption as a result of an energy conservation drive. Electricity bills are set to rise next month by an estimated $120 per household. The public is opposed to the heavier burden, but government leaders intend to push forward with their plan to abolish all nuclear reactors by 2022. A floating pier has been washed ashore in the U.S. state of Washington, apparently having drifted from Japan after the massive tsunami hit the country in March of last year. A U.S. Coast Guard helicopter spotted the 9-meter concrete pier on the shore of the Olympic Peninsula. Bad weather has prevented a close study. No signs or letters have been confirmed on the structure. A floating pier from Japan's northeastern prefecture of Aomori was found on the Oregon coast in June. It was later demolished by the state government. Japan's Environment Ministry says ocean currents are likely to deliver 33,000 tons of tsunami debris to the Pacific coast of North America by June of next year.